I want to share this testimony with you. Will was watching Move Your Mountain, and as he was praying with us, he sensed the presence of the Lord fill his room, and the power of the Lord came upon him, and he got delivered and set free from alcohol. The presence of the Lord is here right now. We're going to get into the word, into some anointed, powerful worship. We're going to pray over all your prayer requests. We're going to take communion together. And I believe what God did for Will, he can also do for you. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to Welcome, family, to Move Your Mountain. The purpose of our time together is to create an atmosphere for the Lord's presence to just come and rest upon each one of us. We're so blessed and thankful you tuned in today. I'm Pastor Gary Mitrick here with Pastor Myra Bell, Pastor Jonathan Schaefer, and Pastor Rebecca Luker. And I'll tell you, there is, there is just an uncommon presence that we are sensing here with us today. Yeah, and, and when, when you sense that, you want to capture that. You want to embrace that moment. You want to pause what you're doing. And so we're thankful today that you've paused what you're doing to embrace and encounter this just special, special spirit that we're all experiencing here. And we know that you're experiencing it at home because there is no distance in the Holy Spirit. That's right. And, and, and I think about it as, as you were talking and giving Will's testimony that our God's presence mm is here for you. Yes. Personalize that thing. He is here for you. So today with expectation, look for him to move on your behalf. Amen. Amen. You know, and I, I, again, I'm thankful for Will. I thank God for your life. I thank him for what he has done in you. And I'm thankful that it doesn't matter if you're Will, it doesn't matter if you're Sally, it doesn't matter if you're Janet, whoever you are, God will meet you as well and deliver you, heal you and set you free. And that's, I love, Move Your Mountain, that's one of the reasons why I love it because we are here to help impart faith to you and encourage you to start believing that God can move every single mountain in your life as you trust Him. And so today as we're starting this program, just bind your hearts with ours and get out your word. Get ready to see God do some incredible things in your life and in your family's lives today. I'm excited, Pastor Amen. Gary. We're gonna get into a good word about God wanting to set all of us free from our bondages, our sicknesses, any hindering spirits in our life that are not of God. So remember, prayer partners are available. The number is there, 888-665-4483. And also, we're going to take Holy Communion, so we want you to get your elements, get a cracker, a piece of bread, some juice in a cup, so that you can participate with us. Well, we're going to go to this wonderful story in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, beginning there in verse 17. It says, Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, they were talking to the Lord, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. And wherever it seizes him, it throws him down, he foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and he becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. Then they brought him to him, to Jesus. And when he saw him immediately, Immediately, that spirit convulsed him. He fell to the ground and he wallowed foaming at the mouth. So Jesus asked his father, 
How long has this been happening to him? And the father says, from his childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, I love this, if you can believe all things, all things are possible to him who believes. This father had a son that not only, he was literally battling epilepsy, he was foaming at the mouth, he was gnashing, but he also had a spirit of suicide. It was trying to kill him, throw him into the fire and into the water because the thief comes to kill, steal and destroy. And this father was desperate for a miracle. And as he brought him to Jesus, I love Jesus' response. And it's our first point. Nothing, mm. no thing is impossible for God. I don't know what you are dealing with today. I don't know how long. We don't know how old this boy was. He says from the childhood he struggled. Maybe you've been struggling a long time with this issue. But I'm here to tell you today is yes. your day for freedom. Yes, yes, yes. Nothing, nothing is impossible with God. And uh, there's somebody watching right now, and you heard Pastor Gary say, you heard me say it just now, and you have, not, you're not doubting God that nothing is impossible, but your situation, your circumstance has remained like it is so long. Listen, if God, something we have to as saints, get in our spirits. If God permits something to go on, he has purpose right. for it. At, but at the same time, there is nothing too hard for God. God will carry you through everything until the time of your deliverance. So don't give up on God. Don't give up because nothing is impossible with God. Absolutely. And, and, and it's, it, you, you'd mentioned the situations that, that cause people, you're not doubting God. One of the things that actually I'd, I'd never caught, it just arrested me in the moment as Pastor Gary was reading the Word of God. That's the amazing thing about the Word of God. Mm -hmm. You can read it for decades and decades yes. and think you know it That's inside right. and out, yes. but there can be times when you just hear it or see it or read it and something new comes. But one of the things that I caught was that it says, and when Jesus saw him, when Jesus saw the boy, then the demon began to start causing because the demonic and, and, and the enemy is always trying to create a show and a distraction so that our eyes are locked on the situation on the circumstances and that causes us to take our faith from the God whom we trust that can do anything but then we begin to start calculating oh this is so bad oh this is so big and so I want to encourage you right now whatever the circumstance it is maybe you're 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 like this young man and it's been something from your childhood trauma, something you saw, something that was spoken over you, something that was uh, done to you or not done for you, that created this space where the enemy thinks that he can traffic. I want to uh, uh, encourage you right now to allow yourself to not focus on the circumstance. Don't focus on the addiction. Don't focus on the lack. Don't yes. focus on the heartache. Focus on God. And maybe right now what you even need to do is close your eyes and just physically begin to just say, I'm trusting in Jesus Come for on. nothing is impossible for him. God, I'm trusting in you because you want to start speaking to the Lord. Focus on him because he is the one who has your breakthrough ready and waiting. And you could be just like Will. I love that testimony. Yeah. Will experience the presence of God. And there are times when it's easier to experience his presence. And it's like, it's, it's, it's easy to not see the circumstance, but sometimes we just got to press in. We do. And you know, I love the fact that this boy's father said he recognized Jesus. Mm. I don't know what 
other resources he tried to use. I don't know what other things he tried to do to get his son the help that he needed. But at this moment, he knew that nothing could help him but Jesus. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to get to that place. We've tried everything else. Nothing can help us but Jesus. And then we have the assurance that when we bring our needs to him, when we bring those desires of our heart, when we bring those struggles, those things that we're only he can help with, that nothing is impossible and he can do. He can be that miracle worker for you in your situation right now. I don't care what the doctors told you. I don't care what the therapist told you. I don't care what the counselor told you. I don't care what the banker told you. It does not matter. What God says is what matters. Yes. And he says that nothing is impossible. That report that you got, it doesn't matter. What re- matters is what God's report says about Amen. you. So today, take heart. Yes. Know that he is working, even in the situation, though it seems yep. bleak, though it might seem dismal, he is working right now for you. And those Jesus. things that are seemingly impossible right. to us, God says, it's not impossible. I am working. Have faith. Trust me. Focus on me. Recognize the one who has all power and all authority, yes. right? Right now in your life. Mm. Amen. Mm. Right. Do you need freedom in your life? Do you need a healing somewhere? Do you need a bondage or an addiction Jesus. broken over you? Are, are you in pain somewhere in your body? Mm. Maybe it's an emotional pain from something you've experienced that deeply hurt you. Why don't you be like Will and just welcome yeah. the presence of the Lord right now to come mm. into your room to come and fill you because it is the anointing yes. that can come upon you and break every yoke off of yes. you. Let's go on and, and read. It says in verse 24 of Mark 9, it says, And immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked that unclean spirit, saying to it, you deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him Mm -hmm. and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, it convulsed him and greatly, and it came out of him. And he became as one who was dead, so that many thought, well, maybe he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, and he lifted him up. Praise God, and he arose. The second point is this. You and I, we have authority to cast out spirits. Spirits are hindering spirits. Spirits want to keep you bound They want to keep you oppressed. God wants to set you free. And I would say to you today, the Bible says our authority is where? It's in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And if you would speak that name and do like Jesus, he didn't talk to the boy, he talked to the spirit in the boy and he loosed him from that deaf and dumb spirit and that boy got a miracle. Amen. Amen. You know, as you're talking, Pastor Gary, I thought to myself, you know, there's times in our lives that we have to actually recognize and admit that there's something in us that needs to change. Mm -hmm. And at that point, that's what happened. That, that man, that dad said something has to change. And there's something that, that has the authority over this dumb spirit that's in my son that's causing all of these issues. And that same, that same authority that Jesus had, we have that authority. I remember in Luke chapter 10, Jesus sent out the disciples, 72 of them, and they came back and they said, we're amazed. We have the power over demons because of your name they bow and then in Luke 10 19 he says I have given you authority to trample on the snakes and the scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you so we have that authority in Jesus Christ that no matter what you are faced whatever seems so great we have to speak that name of Jesus and say I don't come in my authority because We don't have any authority in ourselves. But when we have the power of Christ, the Holy Spirit working within us, we have all the authority that Jesus has given to us 
Think about that. Jesus has given you authority as his son, as his daughter, to be able to do great things, to be able to cast out these demonic spirits. I think of how things are in the world today. There, we need to start casting out some demonic spirits that are in this world that are trying to capture the lives of our children, the lives of our family units. There's some authority that we need to take as children of God in this world right now. We don't need to sit back silently because if we do, the enemy will surely take over, but we need to shout it out. We need to speak it out, the name of Jesus, and take the authority that we all have as children of God in this day and age. I think so often we just let it go, and we don't take that, that seat that we have as children of God. We don't think about the fact that we have that responsibility and that privilege. Yeah, yeah. and we, if you would just start in your own life, yeah. around you, you say, well, I can't do this, and I don't know if, if this, if it. Start with the situations and circumstances around you. God will let you know when the enemy's yes, at work. That's right. And you have the power within you to squash that. That's right. Don't be afraid. Start there. When you go to your job and there's chaos Come and on. confusion, speak against it. Speak yes. peace. Speak against it, and yes. God will honor what you say because you have spoken it. You have the authority to Amen. cast out spirits, d demons. You have the authority to bring things into subjection. Right. Say it. Yes. Do it. Don't let it go on. Like you were saying, Amen. Pastor Rebecca, we can just let things, oh, well, oh, well. Don't, oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, oh, well. Speak it and right. watch what God does through you. Well, and that's one of the things, the same way you have the authority to cast it out, you also have the authority to give it to permission to stay. Mm -hmm. And so if there is torment, if mm -hmm. there's, you know, one of the things that I notice, uh, I can diagnose a, a spiritual thing where there's a spirit at work is, is, is this spirits like to drain your energy, mm -hmm. just like to just bleed you dry. And you're just, you're, you're too, you're too tired to fight. You're, you're too tired to care. That's mm -hmm. real. And I'm, I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. casting right. it out on you. That's something that I recognize in me. And then I'm like, well, this isn't a, oh, I've been working to, this is a spiritual thing. And that's when you have to rise up in your authority because you get what you permit. That's right. Right. And so you have to, to, to be able to diagnose. Jesus was able to diagnose. And then he said something very distinct. He said, and enter him no more. That's right. mm -hmm. Stop letting things get back in. Right. Stop allowing it to find another place to rest because the enemy's not going to stop. Mm -hmm. So we can't stop. But you've got the authority. That's right. You've got the power. You do not have to be ruled or ran That's over right. by this thing anymore. Right. Alcoholism is a spirit. That's why they call it the wine and Spirits. spirit store. Mm -hmm. the, the Greek word for sorcery in the Bible is pharmakia. Drugs invite spirits into your mm -hmm. life. There's so many different ways that we can give spirits avenues. But here's the thing. You don't have to tolerate it. Actually, you've been ordained by God to cast it out, to get say, get out of my family, yeah. get out of my life, get out of my loved one. That's the power that you have as a follower of Jesus right. Christ. You don't have to roll over and take it anymore because like I said, the spirit likes to make a big show. He loves to get people afraid. Don't be afraid. Fear not. God is with you and he has given you the power to cast it out. Just say the word and this thing will be gone. Fear is a spirit. Fear God has not given us the spirit, spirit of fear. That's right. Yeah. So take authority. If, if torment and fear you know is something that you've been vulnerable to, address the spirit and bind it. Mm -hmm. Bind that strong yep. man's spirit of fear. Where's our authority? In the name of Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. There's someone you've been, you've been really bound with, with witchcraft. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've dabbled with a Ouija board or you are reading your horoscope. Something you did opened yourself up mm -hmm. and you just are, are just in a mess. Mm -hmm. and, and I take authority right now over a spirit of witchcraft yes. over your life right now. 
And like Pastor said, don't permit, stop engaging yeah. in things that are giving place That's to the right. devil. That's right. Give no place to Come the on. devil, right. the Lord told yeah. us. Yeah. That there's someone else. You, you, you've had a, some kind of physical problem and you've gone to doctor after yep. doctor and test after test and they can't find anything wrong. And the reason they can't is because it's not physical, Come it's on. spiritual. That's it. yeah. And I bind that, that spirit of infirmity yes. off of your life right now yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. And I say, be loosed yep. from that spirit yes. of infirmity. Oh well, in, let's finish this up in verse 28 of Mark 9. It says, and when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him, <laughs> <laughs> Why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, this kind, there are certain strongholds mm -hmm. that can come out by nothing else but by prayer and by fasting. Mm -hmm. See, I believe fasting increases mm -hmm. the anointing and the authority authority that you and I carry and walk in. Mm -hmm. There are levels of God's anointing. The disciples were anointed, but they couldn't cast that spirit mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, because he lived a fasted life Come on. with prayer and fasting, it was like a one-two punch that knocked the yeah. devil out every time. And my third point is this, the number three, the weapons of our warfare. Oh, they aren't carnal, they're not fleshly, but they are mighty through yes. God. Yes. You got me all excited about the word. <laughs> My God. The, the, the uh, uh, flesh and blood, uh, our flesh and blood, our flesh just wants to get out on us. Mm -hmm. But our warfare is not natural. Come on. It's just not natural. And it doesn't make sense to the natural mind that the word of God, prayer, fasting, all those things would matter. Listen, there, fasting is not just giving up food. For some of us, food is not an issue, mm -hmm. but it could be social media. Mm -hmm. You may have to fast a while from that to distance yourself from that yeah. because every time you're Come awake, on. you're looking into your phone. It could be uh, uh, anything, TV, just on the internet at all. It doesn't matter what it is. What fasting does is get us out of the way, mm -hmm. get our natural selves mm -hmm. out of the way so that we can keenly hear God. God wants to speak, God wants to move through us, but we have to be out of the way. Right. We talked about his presence earlier. His presence is what gets things done. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. His presence, not us. We can pray with you and we have power when we pray, but it is his presence. So when you are thinking about weapons of warfare, spiritually, always think about God's weapons. And we have the power to bring those things, our thought life. Many of us have problems with our thought life. Thoughts are all over the place. When you stop to pray, your mind is all over the place. But the word of God says you have power to bring your thoughts captive. Mm -hmm. Go running after them and right. bring That's them right. captive. Yeah. We have the power to do these things because it's not natural. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't make sense to some of us, but it works. Yes. It works. Yes. It works. See, and that's one of the things. The disciples asked Jesus why it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you asked Jesus? Because here's the thing. You can have all of these different, yeah. different weapons, right? And, and you're not going to use a sword to fight a long distance enemy. That's an up close thing. But, but the reason why you haven't been effective in your warfare is because you might be using the wrong approach or the wrong weapon. So do what the disciples did and say, Lord, why isn't this working? If you engage, which is so few Christians, I believe anymore, uh -huh. that actually engage in spiritual warfare because they don't even realize there's a spiritual battle that's happening. Uh -huh. But even if we do, some of us were prone to give up because it seems as though it's not effective. And we either think that, well, you know, God's not working, mm -hmm. or this is just a bunch of hokum, or I'm weak, or whatever. But we have to stop and say, okay, Lord, yeah. why aren't we able to do this now? Mm -hmm. And the Lord will give us insight 
into our warfare because there's times when the, when the, the, the approach needs to just be a strict. I literally this morning on my way into the studio had a conversation with an individual who has been spiritually draining me for some time. And I'd been processing what is this and how do I approach it? And today the Lord gave me the clear the instruction on how to address this. And it was just a very straightforward application of truth into an individual's life and just letting the, 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 the spirit, not the individual, the spirit say that, that, that you're not going to continue to on. pull on yeah. me like this. And we addressed it and we dealt with it. But there's times where we have to go and say, God, what is the approach that I need yeah. to take? Yeah. And, and sometimes that is going to our pastor, mm -hmm. asking the prayer partner, not just for prayer, but, but, but help me to process yeah. this with God. Yeah. And the awesome thing about the Lord is he's given us the Holy Spirit that helps us to know. He leads us and guide, guides us into all truth. So he will reveal to us the way we need to use our weapons or what weapons we need to use at any specific and given time. You know, whenever we're talking about warfare, I think to myself, how many of us, if we saw someone coming to physically attack us, would just stand still? We would get ready. We would either put up our fists. We would go find a weapon that we could use to engage in the battle. We would do something. We wouldn't just stand there and let and get beat up. And, but why is it that we sometimes as believers, I'm gonna include myself in that, that we sometimes as believers will just sit back and let the enemy come in and bring his attack on us and not use the weapons that are freely given to us by the Holy Spirit, by God, so that we can engage in these battles. Can I encourage you, don't just sit back, engage in the battle because the enemy, Pastor Gary already said it, he's come to steal, kill and destroy. He doesn't care about whether you feel good or not. He wants to destroy you. He wants to bring you down. Don't allow it to happen. Take the authority that you have in Jesus Christ. Yes. Take up the weapons that he's given you. In Ephesians, you can read all about the armor of God and those weapons that he has given you, how you should be dressed in the spirit. Use those things, those tools that God has given to equip you to be that strong and mighty, victorious Christian that we are to be. Because not only do you need it for yourself, but your family needs you to be that. Your church needs you to be that. Your community needs you to be that strong believer in Jesus Christ, ready to engage at any time because you have the power and authority of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're gonna invite you to go Amen. to the worship set and lead us in at a song of worship. If you need prayer, go to the phone, 888-665-4483, while Pastor Rebecca sings for us, Echo in Jesus' name.
every stronghold break in Jesus' name. If you've just tuned in, you're watching Move Your Mountain. We're talking today about getting free from hindering spirits in our life. We also want to remind you we're going to be taking communion in just a few moments. If you don't yet have your elements, get a cracker, a piece of bread, some juice in a cup so that you can join us. So many are calling. We're going to take all the requests to the altar at the conclusion of the program. Some have called back with answers to prayer. Gilbert called. They were praying for a young boy, Anthony, who was really having trouble with his eyesight. He prayed with the prayer partner, said the Lord touched and healed young Anthony's eyes and he could now see clearly. I can see clearly now. <laughs> God is at work. God is at work yes. and we praise him. We thank God. I, I thank God for every praise report. Listen, I found a little secret weapon hmm. against the adversary. Praise That's right. is a weapon. Yep. We're getting ready to take communion and think about what Jesus did for us. He not only died for our sins, but the scriptures say he was anointed to turn to take and give us beauty for ashes, mm -hmm. to give us the oil of joy for our mourning. Yes. And then to be able to give him praise. God did all of that Amen. for us. Yes, we praise God for the testimony that Amen. Gilbert gave. So let's always praise him. Think about even when you are feeling down, it, the scriptures say, put on the garment of praise yeah. for the spirit of heaviness. So we praise God with Gilbert. Yeah. We thank God for each one Amen. that called back. Pam was temporarily homeless. She also called for prayer. She said she walked into a giant eagle store connected with two Christian women and they provided a home for her, which was wow. a real answer to prayer. Heather called for her daughter who had a lot of financial issues. She said her daughter was tithing and she, after prayer, she said she called back to say God miraculously <laughs> provided for her daughter to pay her bills. Yeah. Our God is Jehovah, yes, Jehovah Jireh, our yes, provider. Yes, yes. There's somebody watching, you've been addicted to pornography and God wants to set you free today. Someone else, if you've got any addiction on your life, addictions are a spirit and we want to see every spirit broken off of us now in the name of Jesus. So call that number 888-665-4483. You know, and, and some of you are watching right now and you, you, you're you still living out the behavior or the actions or the, or the memories mm -hmm. of, of something that had happened to you. Yeah. And, you know, there's a reality when you're dealing with spiritual things. You know, Pastor Byron and I, we were talking um, before we began to film today about how, you know, spirits get in. They're kind of like black ants, right? The, the, they just kind of get in. And when you have an infestation, it's not just enough to kill the ones that you see. You mm -hmm. have to find the way that they've gotten in. That's it. And so there are things in your life right now that you're wrestling with that got in through a door some time ago. And I want to encourage you under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and in all honesty, under the guidance of, of a spiritual covering mm -hmm. 
to find those places where they came in and shut the door. Mm -hmm. Some of you are watching right now and the reason why they keep coming in is, is because you have not filled the house with something so there's no room for them. Jesus spoke clearly of this in the gospels when he says, when you cast a spirit out, it goes out into arid places and finds seven more worse and comes back to the house and finds it neatly in order, but unfilled. And it brings those seven worst spirits with them. And you know what? The only way to fill your house is to invite Jesus in. Right. And so right now you're watching and you keep having these things and, and you know it, you sense, it's like this, it, it keeps getting worse. It keeps getting worse. My depravity gets worse. My addiction gets worse. My depression yeah. gets worse. It keeps getting worse. It keeps getting worse. Well, what's gonna stop today? Because you're gonna open your door and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Mm -hmm. And it's very simple to do. It's very easy. You just invite him in and you say, Lord Jesus, I am empty without you. I'm in turmoil. I am in dire straits. But God, I'm inviting you into my life right now. I recognize that, that I am not fit to have you in my home, but you are knocking at the door now. And I open the door and I let you in. And I give you permission to, to not only fill the house, but to, to change me as you see fit. God, I desire to be inhabited by only one spirit, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. And I invite you, Holy Spirit, to come now as I receive Jesus, to fill me, to overwhelm me with joy and with power, with gifts, with peace. I give my life to you and I tell all these other spirits to take a hike. You have no place here now because I am inhabited by the Spirit of God. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me. I thank you. I acknowledge that you and you alone are God. And I thank you for cleansing me, for filling me, and for setting me free. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're going to take Holy Communion together. If you have your elements, let's get them now. Pastor Rebecca, would you pray over these elements for us? Father, we just thank you for the freedom that is found in you, for the love that you have for us, God, that was shown on Calvary, Lord, for your body being broken, Lord, so that we could find complete healing and the blood that was shed for remission of our sins so that we don't have to stand guilt full any longer, but we are guiltless before you because of what you've done. And Father, we just thank you. We honor you today and we remember your sacrifice until we do this with you one more time in heaven, God. I thank you for your love and your mercy. Bless these elements in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take your cracker, your piece of bread, eat of it now and be healed in thank the name Jesus. of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And as Christ lifted a cup, lift your cup and take and drink and be washed and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you enjoy the presence of the Lord, I, I want to invite you to our Holy Spirit seminar this year at Greater Works. We've had a hiatus because of the pandemic. We haven't had it for a few years, but this is our 40th annual Holy Spirit Seminar. We always have it in July, July 10th to the 14th at 7 p.m. We have a, such a wonderful lineup of anointed speakers. I want to extend a special invitation for you to come and join us. If you want more information, you could go to our website, which is greaterworkspgh.com, greaterworkspgh.com. And if you are blessed by programs like Move Your Mountain, it's summertime. A lot of people are vacationing and just maybe busy with things outside. And some of, we just need your financial support right now more than ever to keep us strong through these summer months. I want to give you our address and ask you to prayerfully consider either a one-time gift or a monthly gift. The address is Cornerstone Television Network, 1 Signal Hill Drive, Wall, Pennsylvania, 15148-15. 
1-800-242-8499. We thank you in advance for your prayers and support. We're going to head over to the altar to pray for you while Pastor Rebecca sings for us, King of Glory. There's no one that we want to be with, no better place to be than with you in your presence, abiding daily, Father. God, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for dwelling in us, going and dwelling through us, God, and helping us to reach those around us, God. Thank you for the power that works within us, Lord Jesus. Father, draw us near to you right now, God. Oh, we give you our worship. You're the king of my heart. Come and feel this place. You're the king of my joy, king of my peace, king of my hope. Fill this place, Jesus. You're the king of glory. 
Oh, Pastor Rebecca, his glory is his presence. Amen. And his power and his anointing. And it is here in the studio. And I pray that you feel it where you are right now because we're going to agree together over these needs. And I believe that God is going to move those mountains in your life. Whatever has hindered you, whatever has kept you bound today, you are able to be set free because his presence is present. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We've been talking today about nothing is too hard for God. Nothing at all is too hard for God. And what you're going through is not too hard for God, Amen. my Lord. And it may have been too hard for you, may have been too hard for other yes. people, but it is not too hard for God. And so this is the time when you wanna focus on Him. And you know, there's still time as well. Pick up the phone, 888-665-4483. Right. Right. Join together with a prayer partner. And even if they can't get it out here in time for us, we're going to be praying with you. And we encourage yeah. you as you're watching right now to join your faith together with us as we yes. believe God, his presence to fall, his enemies to scatter and for deliverance to break forth. Amen. Well, as you could see, the altar is filled with requests. Yes. Many of you called them in, mailed them in. And let's all agree together, even if you didn't get a chance to call, mm -hmm. just set yourself right. in agreement yes. with us right now as yes. we pray. Yes. Pastor Myra, would you begin? Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray for each and every one who took the time to call in. And even now we pray that your people everywhere, those who have called in, those who wanted to call in, that they would hope mm -hmm. in you that you would have the Spirit of God stir up hope and cause it to abound in each of your children because we know that faith is the substance of what we hope for. And so we just give you glory for what you're going to do in each and every life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you please slip over and lead us yes. in some worship to conclude? Father, we just thank you and we glorify your name, Lord Jesus. Lord, there might be those that are watching that are just like that man in this account that we talked about today, God, that they say, I believe, but help my unbelief. God, I pray right now that you would let faith arise as we are joining with them for their miracles in their lives, in their homes, in their families, God. Lord, you know the needs that are represented here on this altar. And God, even those that haven't called in yet or written in yet, you already know them. And God, I thank you that you're power is so great as we've already said that nothing is impossible Lord. there's no request that someone has made that you can you also have to say no I just can't do that because God you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think and that's why we are coming to you today because we know you are the source for every answer that we need today God and Lord as we present these needs before you I pray that healing would break out in homes Lord that you would bind hearts back together once again Father that restoration would happen in marriage Marriages, that healing would happen in bodies. Lord, that families would be brought back together. God, those that are dealing with the, the demonic, Lord, issues of homosexuality and things like that right now. God, I pray that you would break it off of them in the name of Jesus, that they would recognize those demonic forces in their lives that are trying to steal them away from you, God, and that you would bring them deliverance right now at this moment as we are agreeing together. God, I pray for every person that might have an unbelieving family member that is watching that is called in. I pray that you would bring them back to you, God, that they would come to a recognition, Lord, that you are the only God, that you are their Savior, that they would fall in love with you. Father, for those believers out there that are watching, restore them. Let them have a deeper walk with you. Draw them near to you right now, Lord God. Let them feel the presence and power of your Holy Spirit that we are feeling right now in this studio. And Father, I thank you for your miracle working power that we're going to get testimonies of in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, God. Lord God, we stand in authority right now in the authority that you have delegated to us yes, by your Holy Spirit, yes, the authority did. that is in your name. And we come against every spirit of contention, every spirit of discord, every spirit of bitterness and unforgiveness, every spirit of addiction, every spirit of loneliness and depression. And we bind the enemy right now in the mighty 
name of Jesus Christ. We shut the door on the enemy. He has no place in our lives. We, we remove every stronghold, every bondage, every hindrance, Lord God. We take every thought captive right now to make it obedient to you and we release the peace of Almighty God into households and families right now. Where there was strife and arguments, Lord God, there is going to be joy and peace in Jesus' mighty name. Lord God, we release from heaven provision right now, timely provision to come, Lord God. When it seems like there is no other way that the needs are going to be met, Lord God, that you are speedily sending right now everything that they need according to your riches and glory. And we just declare it over them right now. There will be no more lack, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. And we stand firm today. Thank you, God. Thankful. Yes, we are thankful that we are not under the influence of the enemy anymore. We are Hallelujah. thankful today that we do not have to tolerate yes. his attacks, tolerate his lies, tolerate his confusion. Right. We just come against it right now. We stand in our authority, Lord God. We speak truth. Yes, yes, Lord. We speak life. We speak Victory, hope. Lord Jesus. We speak restoration, Victory, Lord God, because you and you alone are worthy. We just give you praise for meeting each and every one of these needs according to your riches and glory in Jesus name. Amen. There's someone watching. You have a, a, a child or someone in your family dealing with that transgender yeah, spirit. Yeah. And it is a spirit. Thank you, it's a spirit Jesus. of delusion and Jesus. confusion. Yes. We bind yes. it in Jesus yes. name. Yes. Your battle yes. is Lord not Lord. against flesh and blood. And we bind every stronghold over every life yes, of every do. person yes, watching right now in Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. Well, we hope you were blessed, ministered to, encouraged by today's Move Your Mountain. Pastor Myra is going to take us out by leading us in some wonderful worship. Why don't you join and sing along? God bless you. Cornerstone Television t-shirt, where'd you get it? I am so glad that you asked. You know, this is an exclusive offer for the month of June for you to receive this one-of-a-kind CTVN t-shirt. You can support and sport your favorite Christian intelligence network this summer when you go to barbecues, hanging out with family, and having tons of fun. Oh man, that is so much fun. And speaking of Cornerstone Television, I love their programming, especially that Hope Today show. Yes, we love Hope Today and all of the programs. And you know, with your best gift, request your Cornerstone Television Network t-shirt when you give this month. We have sizes from extra small to 6XL. It is 100% cotton. It is quality, and we want you to have this on you today. That's right. We have one for everyone, and you get to represent the station you love with your own logo t-shirt. 
you'll enjoy this wearable reminder that hope happens here as together we spread the love of Jesus every day. You know, we cannot do it without you. When you give, you help us to impact Pittsburgh and beyond, reaching those of all nations and generations because we know people need to know the hope and the love of Jesus like never before. So why don't you give us a call at 888-665-4483 and request your very own Cornerstone TV t-shirt. That's right. You can also give online at ctvn.org slash donate. We would love to see you out in public somewhere wearing this t-shirt. Maybe we'll have ours on too. Thanks for supporting us.